Governor, are you there? I'm there, Fred. Oh, good. Well, uh, sorry for that little technical glitch there. Thanks for being with us today. I'm delighted to be with you. Thanks for having me on. You should have uh, heard my uh, my over-the-top introduction that I gave of you and uh, talked about how you balance the budget without raising taxes and all that sort of thing. You, you, well, thank, thank you for that. You, I appreciate it. I'm sorry I missed it. <laughs> well, we'll send you a copy. Uh, well, you know, on that subject, how, uh, how does a conservative governor uh, get things done in, um, in a liberal state? Well, it's a mix of things, Fred. We, we have had some real battles here in Minnesota because this has been the land of Eugene McCarthy and Hubert Humphrey and Walter Mondale and Paul Wellstone, and now we have U.S. Senator Al Franken. And while we've oh, at God. times at times been a purple state, it is a state that leans pretty far left. And so there are times when uh, we've been able to negotiate good results and outcomes, for example, in performance pay for education. But there have been other times when it comes to cutting the budget where I pretty much had to go it alone through vetoes or what's called unallotments. And so uh, it's it's been a battle. But well, it sounds like you, uh, you had a rapport with the people and uh, probably had to, to go over everybody here everybody's had to get to them from time to time and uh, and you've obviously gotten some good things done and i'm sure that uh, as uh, a governor uh and as someone who's followed these national issues also for some time you're particularly concerned about what's going on with uh with regard to the health care debate here in washington well i sure am fred and you just touched your, you put your finger on something very important and you've been saying this for years we just need common sense and when you have a budget that is uh, busted, when you have our national government dependent on the issuance of debt to pay its bills and to have that debt be bought in many cases by China or sovereign wealth funds, you know, when the president says we're out of money, then with all due respect, Mr. President, stop spending it. I think this health care bill is going to be a financial monstrosity. It is, I think, going to move the health care system in a very problematic direction. We've got a government, a federal government, that has run into the ground or put onto a pathway to bankruptcy almost every major entitlement program they are currently running. Why would we give them another one when they can't manage the ones they have? Uh, and so it's a very frightening proposal. Plus, it is a bucket load of tax increases in the systems and places that have tried this, including a couple of states within the United States. It doesn't work, Fred. So we have values. We have principles. We know what makes common sense. We've got to stand up and fight for it. And so that's what I'm trying to do in Minnesota and to the extent I can lend voice to it in other places as well. What is, uh, what is your view of the, of the states who have gone in this uh, direction, like Massachusetts and I guess Maine is, is one of them? Uh, you know, it gets back to whether or not there is indeed a free lunch, doesn't it? Well, there's a number of states that have tried various versions of this, and you mentioned a couple. But you know, in Tennessee, they had ten care. Oh, that's not exactly for not sure. Exactly what? Yeah, that was a Democrat governor who recently said, and he's my friend, Phil Bredis, and you know know him well. Yep. You know the state well, obviously. And he recently was quoted in the public uh, saying, "Don't go down this path. It is yep. not going to co contain costs. It isn't going to work." And cautioned against this, and that's coming from a Democrat governor. And Fred, we need to focus on cost containment. Uh, not just expanding access. Both are important, but cost containment for most Americans, their main concern is affordability, and the Obama plan will make it more expensive, not less expensive. Well, uh, it defies common sense, and people are picking up on it. Uh, there, there's no question about it. From polls, from people you talk to, the notion that you can cover another 30 million or however many million they come up with uh, uh, today, uh, and uh, it can be paid for by uh, squeezing Medicare without uh, reducing um, the, 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 the care or coverage of, of Medicare and without any increased taxes except on a handful of taxpayers. It just defies common sense. And, and, and people know, you know, if they, wanted, if they wanted to make some reforms, because as you point out, our entitlement system is going uh, bankrupt, people would be willing to hitch up their belt and do that. But they're not being honest in the way they're portraying this thing, are they? No, and I think if you want to control costs, the best way to do that is give people who need financial help help, but give it to them directly. Uh, empower consumers, empower individuals and families in relationship with their doctor to make decisions for their health care. Give them good information. But, you know, health savings accounts in Minnesota, we were recently ranked as having the highest percentage of our population 
under age 65 in health savings accounts at 9.2 percent. That's the highest in the country. And there's a high level of satisfaction with those accounts. They are work and they're con- helping to control costs. In our state employee program, Fred, we said to our state employees, in conjunction with the unions, because their financial backs were getting broken by runaway premium increases, we reformed the program to say to our employees, look, you can go anywhere you want. But if you choose to go to a place that's high in cost and poor in quality, you're going to pay more. Guess where they go? They, they are migrating to higher quality, lower cost places. And three of the last five years, the premiums in that employee pool have been 0% premium increases and the other two years substantially below market. Those are the kinds of reforms we need nationwide or in other states, not this federalization of health care. Well, what you're clearly doing in Minnesota is interjecting individual choice, individual responsibility, uh, and uh, and help helping uh, uh, people be in a position to exercise those uh, those choices and well, uh, it's a it's a funny thing and it and it works and we've got some other government programs that are the costs are out of control and we've got the same kind of problems that they do in, in other states in those programs but Fred if I said to you go buy a television set you know don't don't bother with the price don't worry about the features you go buy whatever one you want don't even look at the price tag just send the bill to me and Mary at the governor's residence in Minnesota we'll pay for it and you know, would you show up with a 12 inch black and white mm-hmm. you know the answer is no mm-hmm. and we need to make sure that consumers are in charge that they have good information about price and quality and they can function in a marketplace that's how we're going to control costs not having the federal government take it over I think you're exactly right it's all about freedom and 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 having respect enough for the average person uh, for, for them to make the best choices for themselves. What do you think about the uh, Afghanistan situation where the president uh, looks like he's in the process of uh, reevaluating that whole thing? Well, a number of things. I just returned there from my second trip to Afghanistan a couple months ago and my fourth trip to Iraq. And, you know, Afghanistan is a very uh, challenging place for all the reasons that you hear about in the press. But I I was troubled by General McChrystal's comments on an interview over the weekend that he hadn't talked to the president but once since President Obama was sworn into office. I believe that the commanders on the ground are saying we have to have more troops, I think, in order to protect the troops that are there and to complete the mission we should honor that request and implement that request. I, I don't know if President Obama is going to do that. I think he should. Um, you running for uh, president, Tim? <laughs> I'm finishing my term as governor. I'm going to speak out on these issues here in Minnesota and across the country. But as to what I do down the road, I don't know, Fred. I, I haven't decided that well, one way people, or the other. Uh, people are looking for strong leadership, so keep it on your radar screen. And thank you for being with us today. Really you're, appreciate, you're welcome. It. appreciate it. Appreciate it.